Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Battle Bros. Well, the reincarnation that is Battle Bros on Allies Index. I'm Toxic, and uh, with me today is Seb. Hello. And Savage. What's up? So yeah, Battle Bros, a little bit of history here, I guess. Uh, Battle Bros was originally a show done by uh, Savage and myself on uh, Dice Troop, and we talked about mostly 40k stuff and just kind of our hobby stuff and whatever we want to talk about. Um, we did a fair few episodes on there and then brought it back um, just before we, we ended up leaving Battle... Uh, 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 Dice Troop, that's the one. And then, uh, yeah, so now we're bringing it back um, on Allies Index with the addition of uh, Seb. How does it feel, Seb? Indeed. Feels good. Gonna be cramming some Age of Sigma down to people's throats, making it more than just 40k. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you know. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll talk to you about that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as uh, some of you might have known or might be. You know, might remember we did uh, the hammer together on uh, Dice Troop, so, uh, you know, it's going to be very similar to that, um, in the sense of, well, <laughs> it's kind of what we're used to. Um, the hammer, though, was only 40k. Well, it wasn't really only 40k, but yeah, it was. Because um, <laughs> none of us really knew anything <laughs> else. But uh, we're opening our minds um, with Seb mostly. Has and been, our legs. Uh, <laughs> has been uh, dabbling in some Age of Sigma. And, uh, yeah, Indeed, so and had a thoroughly good time. Yeah, so that'll be showing up a little bit more. Um, you know, probably not going to be dominant, but I mean, if you're in the Warhammer hobby in general, you're probably familiar that 40k has the dominance when it comes to Warhammer. But yeah, <laughs> so get used to it. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're going to, you know, this will kind of be, you know, it's our pilot episode, so it's going to be a little rough. Uh, but hopefully not too bad. Uh, so we're going to start it off with uh, some news and rumors. Uh, Seb usually takes it over from here with his uh, news and rumor type stuff. So, uh, Seb, do you want to do like a little intro to your news and rumors? Let, you know, kind of keep yeah. your style of uh, so yeah. whatever. Anything you want to mention? Well, yeah, so um, at the beginning of each show, we'll do some news and rumors, talk about things that are upcoming, talk about things that are yeah on their way, and maybe a few things a bit more speculative. Uh, but generally looking yeah into the weeks ahead, and then maybe a bit further than that, showing off a few pictures, and generally just having a bit of a chat about yeah new or rumored things uh, on the horizon. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into... It's all Age of Sigma at the moment, with releases and rumors, really, uh, with 40k kind of getting pushed to the side at the moment while yeah games Workshop gives uh age of stigma all the love and as much attention as it can to get it off the ground so uh we have coming very soon next week we have the new the blood warriors uh the these are the basically the chosen of corn uh warrior models these were only available previously in the actual start set itself um i believe they're actually on the front cover of white dwarf uh which we that, can that, throw up that's what point. i have up there now Right yeah. now, right now I have the white dwarf, and then I have a little picture of you, a feed of you in the corner. So, just because I'm showing stuff, you are still on the screen, so be aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. I won't take my shirt off or anything. Um, but yeah, so we've got the the blood warriors here, looking rather awesome. There's a few different um, sculpts and things that we haven't seen from the uh, original set, including the standard bearer, and this uh, rather awesome looking double glaive. Uh, holding guy which is pretty cool so yeah that'd be bolstering the ranks of the uh corn bloodbound or the gore tide uh that's rather awesome and even more awesome than that which is just absolutely insane uh is the uh the battle tome uh and the dreadhold itself which is going to be a huge chaos fortress of ridiculousness and it looks unbelievably amazing it is uh, just we go huge... on that one second uh, oh, yeah. Just a question with those, what are they called again? Those Blood Warrior guys? The blood Warriors, yeah. yeah. Um, you play Corn, right? Like in Age of Sigma. Would you be getting these? Do you yeah. think like you need more of them to add on to the Age of Sigma stuff? 
I would very much like some more of these. They they are awesome. Like I said, they're they're basically chosen. They've got the kind of this the stats of of more uh, epic uh, warriors of chaos, but they also have the really cool rule was if they die in combat, they still get to fight in combat, <laughs> uh, which is rather awesome. And I think with these the new greater weapons um, and the standard. That's all only going to add to their uh, lethality, and I definitely would something I would be looking at picking up. I think it's the same with um, was it last week or the week before we had the retributors for the Stormcast Tunnels got re released, and again, there they you can have retributors or protectors with a wider variety of larger weapons. So I think that's basically the same thing we're getting here. Different sculpts, different weapons in the standard. So these will be even more deadly than the ones in the box. Yeah, I heard a good so thing yeah, about I think the other troops sense. that you get. The Reaver guys or whatever they're called. The so Blood Reavers are great. I had they... good things about them because you can get like just big squads and then just like throw them at people and people can't handle the huge squads of them. Yeah, they are sort of the equivalent to cultists or, or something like that in 40k, but you're just throwing them at units, swamping them, and if you've got the Blood Scrater, uh, the, the big corn standard guy, he's buffing them crazy, because his standard, his standard standard uh, buffs them for like an extra attack, and their own special rule, if they're near a standard, they get buffed an extra attack, so they've gone from, from like one attack standard to three attacks. And Great. then that the fact that they don't have a save, yeah, doesn't really matter so much. See, I like Although to... I've been throwing 30, 40 dice and still not killing that much. <laughs> that sucks. I would like to turn those blood warriors into berserkers, but those little uh, those leather boots that they wear is what's putting me off. Because <laughs> they could definitely make <laughs> berserkers. Like, even though you can see, like, their arm and stuff, but, like, Khan rocks his, like, un unarmored arm. So <laughs> it's like... Oh. It... But, uh... Yeah, so, so those leather boots put me off from converting them into 40k. What, what do you think, Savage? I know you're, you're a fan of the, the Zerkers. What do I think about the Blood Reavers? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the Blood Warriors, yeah, and the possibility for... It would work. I mean, the fucking... The Berserker models they have now, I'm pretty sure, still have gloves. Yeah, they do still have gloves, yeah. 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 I'd prefer the it's... gloves and the boots, though. Yeah. You just paint them to look like armor though. Just kind of like I would shave know. down a bit. I would know. <laughs> <laughs> well, but maybe just imagine that they've they've been running on their ceramites so so long that they've worn them down. They needed some more leather booties made from people they've slaughtered. Yeah, it, it's it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one that even in the fantasy setting is it kind of annoys me. You got these, like, heavily armoured guys <laughs> with their leather boots. It's, like... Why? <laughs> because those boots were made for walking. And that's just what they'll do. <laughs> so these so walls can't I... run. Special rule? Yeah. <laughs> Special walker. Walking boots. Yeah, made yeah for these walking. boots were made the for walking. cannot run. <laughs> but ignores, ignores any moving oh, through diff like, difficult terrain. You just don't have to not slow down. You just go through it. <laughs> but you can't exactly. run. <laughs> But, uh, that, that would be interesting. I can have to agree with you on that. Like, I, I also think weirdly having them black, like it made them easier for me, quicker for me to paint them. But I, it it's weird breaking up all the red and gold on the model with with a big lump of black. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of talk about that. But I guess we'll go on to the 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 dessert, the the big prize. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I got a bit overexcited and went to this a bit early, but the dread hold is coming and this just sounds absolutely nuts um they've got the, this the image of the whole thing uh being made to uh, an eight-pointed chaos star which is just nuts um with storm guards it. tunnels are sailing it anyone watching and now has just seen the all sorts of corn because i'm trying to find the picture <laughs> of the top down view there we go i found it wonderful but yeah it's just this huge absolute monstrosity of a chaos uh, Bastion in lots of different pieces and just looks to be just so much fun and just a beautiful mod model and piece of scenery. Uh, there's a whole uh, hardback book coming with lots of details and special rules for it and presumably more scenarios and fluff. Uh, that is the third book in three weeks for Age of Sigmar, which is a game that doesn't have rule books 
because you have them all on the piece of paper and in the war scrolls. Uh, but again, none of these books are essential. They are just to add more flavor and add more things to your your world. So you kind of pick up at your leisure. Yeah, so uh, I'll go through on my end and uh, bring up the pictures of the individual pieces. Uh, let Seb know what's currently displayed. And then if you have any information on that, we'll, we'll go over that. And so I will go to the next one that I have here. It's the uh, Malefic Gate. So the Malefic Gate, uh, yeah, this this is looking rather awesome. And it, this is going to be a $100 uh, specula speculative. Um, as far as I know, there's, yeah, it, it looks up, looks like it adds up all together to about $300 for the whole thing. We should see Ooh, how many I'm assuming the Olympic gate is just like the main gate of this complex or? Uh, yeah, I think that that is going to be, so what, yeah, what the dollars, gate just seems. What dollars is this in? 300 pounds or US dollars? I would imagine it'd be US, US dollars. Oh yeah. Which isn't awfully too bad. I mean, it's a it's very expensive, but this is a very big kit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, anything on the Malefic Gate before I switch to the next one? Um, no, just lovely detail, murder holes, and just where the bad guys spew forth from. Okay, so next up we have the fortress walls. How many skulls can you get on one <laughs> piece of wall? That uh, is. Well, I don't know. We'll have task. you count them, and you'll tell us next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Probably still be counting. <laughs> <laughs> and those are going to be sending you back twenty five dollars a piece. Uh, these walls. Are we on the assumption you can kind of create your own fortress, or is it like it's has one kind of configuration, and you have to buy all the parts to do it, or could you make a smaller one? I th I think you could definitely use the parts separately I, it would, would definitely uh be down to how you interpret the, the the rules that are in the book itself and and how you use them in a kind of scenario or, or situation but if they're they're selling them all, all separately i wouldn't how does the is it the aquila aegis line or the uh, the big 40k oh the trench system oh the aegis or... aegis defense Thing, so they just defense line is like the small little wall with like the quad gun, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That that one you buy it for like fifty points and it comes with all of the walls. It comes with two, four big, four small, and then no turret. You gotta buy the turret separately. Um, but oh. then the rules for that are each piece has to be connected to another piece, so you can kind of separate it as long as it's connected to another piece, or you can make it all into one big one. That one's like you pay X amount of points and you get X amount of like you get a set amount of pieces. So I mean, if that's okay. if that's this case where it's like, well, Age Sigma doesn't really have points, so does it? So it's like we there are there are war scrolls for it, like the Sylvanath, the, the tree people can sing uh, forests into into being and plop them down, and you you would take the Sylvanath Forest as, as one of your war scrolls. So this could end up like that, or again, this could be purely scenario based. So the war scroll might just be like, this has six walls, one gate, one yeah. thing, two, whatever. And then you just make it using the pieces that you have, like from that war scroll. I, I would I would imagine so. We, we have to, yeah, see when the book actually comes out. Okay, so next piece we have... Uh, your face is blocking that. Um, it's the Overlord Bastion. <laughs> Overlord Bastion. Uh, add a, add a SE to that, and you've got myself. Uh, or maybe change the O to an A as well. But, um, <laughs> I am Overlord Sebastian, and that is some, again, just beautiful skulls, spikes, brass, deathness, um, and that is going to be sending you back $130. Ooh. But it's mighty pretty and some some stairs, good good stuff. Yeah, this is uh, the, the where we've got the images from. The the first comment is uh, I I hate being poor, and yeah. yeah, it makes you feel that way. Yeah, I mean this is a big piece of terrain, but like that is a lot of money on terrain for three hundred dollars. You could get like a decent sized army for that. So. Yeah, it does have massive blades coming out of the um, crenellations though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like what uh, Savage was saying before. You could easily use this in 40k as well. Like, 
because you have the, the Bastion 40k piece, um, you could easily just take this and yeah. use it as the, the rules for the 40k Bastion. Uh, would you uh, be interested in doing that, uh, Savage? Ah, uh, I think I gotta paint all that stuff there. That's a lot of trim. Okay, let's say it came painted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I reckon it, the whole thing would work as like a like you could Susan use it for a forty k thing or something. Or like yeah, a, the stronghold assault or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You like have it like set up in the middle of the board. And like one team sets up in there, and then the other team sets up around the board. You could do like a planet sh planet strike game. Yeah, you even, like you could do a lot oh. of things with it. Yeah, apocalypse, anything. And this thing, you can use it as as the war scrolls and things intend, or you can just use it as as scenery. Obviously, it's very expensive scenery, but it's it's just a stunning kit. Yeah, it definitely yeah. is. If I was going to take my demon kin and you know do like a like an armies on parade or something like that. Um, oh yeah, that like, stuff would be sweet. It's not going to stand out as much as something that you scratch built yourself, but I mean, you know, you buy a board, you buy some of this, and you're pretty much good. Yeah. Then you could, and since it's going to be for like a display board, you could configure it in any way that you'd you'd want. The way that I would want to do it would be to have like a like a big like blood moat just going around it. That would be cool. <laughs> like that'd be really that'd be cool. Awesome. Some moat of blood. So we've just taken like Seb's Age of Sigmar and just like ripped it, ripped the carpet out from under him. But like, nah, let's put forty k on that now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's forty k. I think if anyone is just, like yeah. <laughs> watching this as like you know into Age of Sigma, it's like these people are just corrupting Age of Sigma with the forty k <laughs> painted. That looks oh, pretty big though. Damn right. Like a, a bloodthirster and like two of the beastman giant things on there. I think. Yeah, that bloodthirster at the back, he is coming up to this about the height of the the top of one of those um, wall pieces. I saw one of them in store today. Not as big as I thought it would be. The what? The bloodthirster? Yeah. Yeah. No, they're, I have one, and it's uh, they're, they're big, but like they're not like. This with everything, I think, like the night when they came out, you know, it looks yeah. a lot bigger. And then when you get in person, like, oh, this is disappointing. But uh, it's like the, got used to the that, size right? of. A a winged hive tyrant. Uh, yeah. So, uh, next one. What is this? Oh, this is just the Chaos Dreadhold look of it with the uh, opening. Where, like, all the... Oh, yeah. Sigma guys are going in there. Um... It's, I think it's just great to see these, the, like, the the guys fighting on it. But, as you said, like, for the armies and parade or some diorama, I can't wait to see people doing some really interesting things. To set these up, What's the... Uh, but the the dreadhold. Oh no, that's not a separate. Oh, the, that doesn't seem to have a separate price for the for that part. But yeah, it's something that um, I was talking about before the show. Was can you imagine if this is like something that they lean to of bringing out fortresses and Age of Sigma games turn into like defending and sieging like castles and fortresses and stuff, and you like catapults and trebuchets and stuff to try and like take down the these castles and stuff it'd be sweet it'd be freaking awesome because the, again with the books that are coming out they are really heavily leaning on the scenario basis and sort of special rules special setup special scenery and special units so it does all feed into this and this is some really exciting stuff and if it could be used for age of sigma and 40k happy days this is the glory of chaos the king well, chaos is great because it just transcends everything What's well, like I guess Games Workshop knows it. I mean, you know, they're gonna be like, "Well, this is it is Age of Sigma," but you know, people are gonna be bringing like 40k into this. Like, <laughs> well, well, plus the, it's gonna make them more money as well exactly, if they make yeah. it more modular. Yeah. No. Yeah. It does look roughly based on the same Bastion kind of. If you, you look at the, the the shape of things and the trim on it, I love it the, does have that the skulls, the like on the end of like. The opening, yeah, the, and the then skulls. Like the, yeah, they're like pretty, the, they're the pretty freaking big as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's the next one we got here? This is oh, that's the same one. The Bastion. Is that all of them, or did I miss one? Uh, yes. Yeah, far, as far as I can tell, you've got the the Skull Keep, the Overlord Bastion, the Malefic Gate, and the Fortress Wall. And if presumably if you need one each of those, was your 130, 230, 255, 
330. Yeah, 330. But that's if you don't need more than one wall. <laughs> well, yeah, I've got a... Um, I have right now the new release is like a picture from the White Dwarf, I guess, where it has uh, Corn Bloodbound Blood Warriors. Uh, yep. $62. Chaos Dreadhold Skull Key, 75 Oblord Bastion, 130 Chaos Dreadhold and Lithic Gate, 100 Fortress Wall, 25 What's the Battle Tome? Is that the book for it? Yeah, but the Battle Tome will be the book for it, yeah. Right, $33. And the Soft Cover, 25 Digital. Price is not available. And these are 90 page books. Yeah. All right, so it's not bad. So that one wall piece, like you literally just get one wall and that uh, links things together. Yeah, I, uh, I think so. Yeah, it's one fortress wall yeah. section. Yeah, and it just links stuff together. But like for, like it's... say, like the Malefic Gate, you get one gate, two wall sections, and uh, oh, a okay. bridge. And uh, like the Dreadhold uh, Overlord Bastion uh, is one skull keep, one additional tower block, one stairway, one wall section, and one wall end. Uh, the skull keep is one skull keep, two door designs, and a balcony overlooking despair. Despair. <laughs> <laughs> they get well, they went a little bit esoteric with that description. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like some of them seem good. It I looks mean, like. It looks like the walls are being used for the floor, though. If you go to that, like, the big overlooking picture. Oh, for, for the, 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 the round piece in the middle? Yeah. I do see what you're saying there, actually. Uh, well, a lot of Games Workshop designs are, like, done in, like, you know, they're 3D sculpted and whatever, and, like, CAD design, so they can just take something from one design copy paste yeah, it chuck and it on just input, input it into another one so it's not surprising yeah. if it does look similar like that so the one that, the overlooking one that they have there like that's one two three four five six seven eight nine skull keeps is that not i uh, that might be yeah so that's oh, it's it's eight and then the one or is that not the the one in the middle looks like it's just the ones on the edges. Oh, yeah. yeah I think so, it's the same, yeah. So oh, if yeah, you're it's going, the same. what, nine skull keeps, and you have to buy all those? How much, like, the skull keep is $75? So you're looking at way more than $300 if you wanted to make that big one that you see on that, yeah. that shot there. So, yeah. so if you want something like that, that's you're definitely throwing in a lot of money for, like, realistically if you're looking at them on just the average person's board you're probably gonna have one tower maybe some walls around it rather than like yeah. a huge castle like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that's like i think this this why there'll be there'll be rules for each piece i, I imagine and and the, the the more you have the more you put together the more special it is and the more it hurts your wallet yeah but it looks beautiful um yeah i mean it's definitely interesting and we'll uh We'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, once it gets released, we'll see how many people pick it up, how much, I, and who, who I, buys I, into what. I assume it'll be on their the web store by Saturday as well. So yeah, they'll have and they'll probably have a huge bundle to make that exact one as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> For sure. Can't wait to see the Australian price on that. <laughs> yeah, and we'll have the War Scrolls. We actually have a little look at see what the rules themselves are. Australian price for the skull keep is 125. So if you want eight skull keeps, <laughs> that thousand oh, I, right there. I want to start Age of Sigma. I might make the board first. Like, can I just play <laughs> with the skull keeps, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like just a... lifting the whole thing up. Yeah. <laughs> That's like without without walls. Like eight skull keeps. What like thousand dollars? So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you go back to 40k, you just stick them together to make a Chaos Titan. Yep. You <laughs> almost of, could, because, like, the big titans, their legs are basically bastions. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I'm saying that, I'm calling that now. We're going to see some kind of Chaos Titan built out of this. I'm sure we will. But, uh, any last words before we move on to, uh, 
Now these are we've done our news and rumors. So before we move on to uh, the next part, the more yeah, I just want to throw, just to throw out there because rumors. Obviously, Forge World's got a new site with PayPal and gone to the Games Workshop style of doing their their site now. And there's some new releases. Eidolon I threw up on the blog uh, yesterday, as well as the new Centurion uh, Space Marine model, who is pretty rugged and raw, and I like him a lot. I've been having also, problems with the GW and Forge World websites though. When I click on them, it's like loading up like it's a Moby site and I have to scroll down to the bottom and click view full site. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know if it's just my inter uh, like my computer doing this. But I have no idea. That's bizarre. That's not something I've I've come across recently, but it's definitely an interesting one. Yeah. Okay, carry on. Um yeah, and the, the other things are uh, Death Watch got released uh, either today or yesterday uh, on iOS and hopefully it's coming to Android soon. It's a turn-based space marine on Tyranid, uh, turn-based, yeah, action thing going on there because obviously millions of video games and mobile games coming out for Warhammer at the moment. And also there is uh, Freeblade, which is uh, knights and vehicles and all sorts of cool stuff fighting each other out again on iOS and tablets and hopefully coming to Android uh, they're all speculated for the the fall, no specific date, but fall is when they come in. And we did sort of discuss that we might do a Battle Bros just talking about some of our uh, favourite or most excitable uh, video games coming, because there are so, just so many, <laughs> so many coming. We could do that, or we could just say Eternal Crusade right now. <laughs> <laughs> but every, everybody's left. Everybody, like, the studio head, the creative lead, is it the, like, four or five really important people have gone, which is definitely concerning. Yeah, but, I mean, they're being replaced. It's not like the positions are just open. No, no, this is true. But, yeah, definitely something we can talk about, but not today. But, uh, yeah, any, uh, anything else there, Seb? Uh, no, no, that's the rumors for 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 this for this week. Uh, we'll we'll maybe look a bit further ahead uh, the more we get into doing Battle Bros. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, so uh, next up, we just kind of we'll talk about random stuff until uh, some random topics that kind of come up in the 40k and Age of Sigma hobby that we've experienced and want to talk about. Um, so that you know could really be a range of anything. When, when it comes to the topics, but definitely if there's any anything that you want to hear us talk about, uh, leave a comment, let us know, send us a message, you know, get in contact with us anyway, and just let us know what you want to hear us talk about. We'll definitely rather talk about something that people want to hear rather than us just kind of talking about something that we want to talk about. Um, if there's someone out there that wants to hear something, we'd rather talk about that. But, uh, yeah, so, there's only uh, you need to get off your chest, isn't there? <laughs> we're saying that I, I, I want to like to have talked about and the topic that I'm bringing up is the change ever since was it the Dark Angels of the Space Marine Codex that came out um, was uh, and it's a pretty huge change I mean it, it's been like this you know, just recently and before that uh, it has been completely different and that's uh, scouts getting uh, ballistic skill and weapon skill a plus one to that to their, to their stats and I mean people out there might think well that's not that huge it's just you know one stat changing but it is huge it's really big like a one increase in a stat is huge like when you're when you're talking like things ranging from say ballistic skill three to five being like maybe the average uh going up one is en enormous like just insane um and yeah i'm not happy with it so they're... Yeah, we're like going for four, like because four is 50, 50 chance, isn't it? Because four, five, six, one, one, two, three. It's so a one yeah, in six from... chance. <laughs> 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 but yeah, they went from, uh, yeah, for three ballistic skill to four. So previously they needed a four up, which was you know the fifty fifty, and now they need a three up, which is better than. A hit yeah. like uh it's and the whole reasoning before is that they had the worst ballistic skill the weapon skill because they're the newbies you know the scouts of the new space marines they haven't trained and learned to get that weapon skill that ballistic skill and now all of a sudden you know games workshop's just like well they're just like regular space marines now 
Uh, and as far as I know, they haven't changed the buff. Um, and, and there's two big concerns. Like, well, there's more than two, but the big concerns that, that come up with me is that I like Space Wolves, and I'm, I'm not a... I, I am a Space Wolf player, I don't currently have a Space Wolf army, but uh, Space Wolf scouts are not the newbies. They are meant to be basically the veterans that you know want to work alone, they don't work well in a group, so they'd be scouts. Uh, so Space Wolf scouts have always been in the veteran slot, and have always had that better um, weapon skill, ballistic skill, because they are you know veterans. And now all of a sudden, the newbie scouts from the other Marine Codexes are getting the same stats, not to mention their troops, so they have objectives secured if you're going to be taking them in the combined arms detachment. Um, that's probably cheaper. And then the, the bigger thing that comes out to me is that now Blood Claws, it's more than just one unit. Blood Claws, Sky Claws, the Swift Claw Bikers, all are going to be have the, the worst ballistic skill weapon skill. Because I, as far as I can tell, they're still considered to be that, that newbie space marine. Because Blood Claws, Swift Claws, Sky Claws are all the new space wolves. So they have that lower stats. So it's like, you know, give them some love and, and increase their ballistic skill weapon skill. When was the space marine codex? Uh, sorry, the space wolf, space wolf codex. Was, there, was that recent? Uh, it's 7th edition. Or has it been? It was 7th edition. Okay. Yeah, sometime last year. So it'll be looking, looking like a while before they get bumped, unless they get exactly. errated or something. Which is not going to happen. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. No. How can you change something? It's not like it's a small thing. Like It's a pretty crucial thing to Space Marines in general. That... It's not like it's changing like a specific army war gear or something like that. You're changing like something that's a, a, what you, like a precedent in army-wide from from codex to codex on you know and and then you're changing it on some but not all of them but it's, it's, it's more like all of them but not all of them just not space wolves because it's all, all space marines and all dark angels isn't it a blood angel oh blood angels as well yeah exactly. i forget blood angels get their own blood angels um so right i was just wanting to talk about this sort of fluff wise but also game wise as well so uh cultist has a blister skill of and weather skill of three. Um, so I would Im I would definitely imagine that a scout would be better than a cultist. Um, my other question, my sort of question would be how how long are we talking scouts? Because there's obviously you go from an ear fight to being a scout and then you serve scouts until you go into like becoming a tactical or or a devastator or, or whatever. How, like how long are we talking about the serving period? I, I I don't have any issue like I could see like fluff wise I mean I don't know Seb but like I I just I could see okay. like from a fluff perspective like yeah I I don't have any issue with them changing it and being like a scout is going to be better than a cultist it's going to be better than a guardsman you know so you know they should they're still going to have better training even if they've only been in there for two weeks you know what I mean yeah because they, they are a space marine but the the thing that gets me, like, yeah, just give them, like, worse leadership and a worse save, and then they, you know, they're not as good as a tactical marine. But now you have, like, you still you still have an issue where you have other codexes that have the same units, the same fluff, but the stats are not matching up. You do have other codexes. You have a Blood Claw like in the same, in the same, or a Blood Angel scout. It, exactly the same training, well, to an extent. Better than a cultist, yeah. obviously. So if you're going with that thing of, well, the law, you know, they're better than a cultist, better than a guardsman, so they should have that. You still have the issue where they didn't do it for everyone. It, it is bizarre. It's almost like a like a, an afterthought they had after after the blood angels happened. It's, it, it, it is a strange one. It's almost like that if there was something in between, that would make more sense. But there is not. There isn't anything between three and four. So is it? So it is the the save, the leadership, and the the loadout that they can take. Yeah, and uh, they'll yeah. probably have like infiltrate and you know stuff like that. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, Savage being really quiet over there. What's your opinions? I know you don't have a lot of experience with Space Marines and Scouts, uh, specifically. Death to the False Emperor. But uh, oh, what's sorry. Your thought? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's. It's kind of dumb, but it's kind of not. 
because they like they haven't gone through the training, but they have like they would have all their like augments and shit that would make them a space marine, right? Yeah, they've been hip hypnogogged and all that, so hypno yeah, trained. So, and... so I mean, like they're already technically they're already a space marine. They just haven't been around for that long, sort of thing. But what about when it comes to the fact that you have basically the same units in this in in the same codex in different codexes, codexes, codices, <laughs> codexes. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, they have different stats, and it's you know pretty like it's pretty huge. Yeah, but I mean, it's still a different army, though. Like, technically, it's a different codex, so it's a different army, so the units don't have to match. Yeah, but when it comes to like your or like Space Marines are very similar, like hand, like just they're very similar. Like when it comes to picking a Space Marine army, it's like you want to have red guys or blue guys, or you want to have like you know. <laughs> yeah, but space space wolves are completely different altogether. Oh yeah, it's like, oh, do I want to have my space marines with fucking wolf pelts on them, or with, or with like, you know, (laughs) use on their shoulder pads? It when it comes down to like, no, when it comes down to like, don't really. When it comes down to like more of like a a competitive mindset or more of a, uh, you know, an idea of balancing and things like that, it is a glaring hole. Like, (laughs) you're gonna have people that just either won't pick up that codex, won't play that codex, or you know, it, for for that reason, well, it won't play scouts. Yeah, yeah. I was like, with the blood angels, the blood you would never really see blood angels scouts in any sort of uh, thematic army, really. So I was wondering if that 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 might possibly explain them there. But it is weird that they, in incongruous, that they don't match up. Is what's the is the is the points different very big? Because it would be very interesting to see like a um, dark angels scout force <laughs> against the blood angels scout force. And see if the extra models or not extra models or uh, extra stats actually made the real difference in that battle. I would assume if, you, if it, you're that con- if you're that concerned about your scouts not having that extra weapons or ballistic skill, and you're playing another space marine army like uh, space wolves, just ally them in. But that's the point. You shouldn't have to do that, that though. <laughs> like you, that, that, it's <laughs> yeah. But like... go, going on the going on the logic that all codexes need to be the same. Like if they're a space marine one and they need to have the same stats, then Chaos Marines should then have all the equipment that uh, space marines have. I'm breaking my neck nodding to that one <laughs> because they're still they're still space marines and they turn trader all the time. Why why don't we have land speeders then? Like I yeah, can... we have other stuff as well, but like it's it's the same sort of argument. <laughs> I, it's, I, it's, I just it's, love it's, the idea of a space marine tamed uh, defiler. It's made it made it nice, painted blue. <laughs> The, the difference there is that Chaos get stuff that Space Marines don't get. Space Marines get stuff that Chaos don't get. Where it's like yeah. a Space Marine Codex and a Space Marine Codex are both Space Marine Codex. Like getting the same stuff bar maybe one or two units specific to that Codex. It's like a Scout is a Scout. <laughs> there's no like there's no difference there. And it's it's just weird that they would make such a huge change for what I can see no other reason apart from maybe wanting to sell some more scouts. Like that that's the only reason that I can see that they would have done it is to sell more scouts. And that's just something that companies have to do to sell product and I can understand that and I have no issue with them making stuff better to sell models. But it's just it's just weird. I just don't see why they just can't come out with something they can you know, you write a point if they have to increase the points of other units, just come out and be like the points changed on this, or the points have gone down on that, and you know, because I, I've, I looked up at the Space Wolf, um, like FAQ that was back in October of last year, and stuff has its t- stats changed in that. It's a one-page thing, and stuff has stats changed in that already. Is it that hard to someone spend thirty minutes to come out and say, "Oh yes, yeah, Scouts and Blood Angels have weapon skill four now, ballistic skill four now." 
uh, blood, blood Claws now have weapon skill plus 6 skill 4. It would take them absolutely no time at all, and it would just unify everything. And it just goes to the point, like, they're trying to get everything up into 7th edition, they're trying to catch everything up and have it all unified, have the one rule set, have everyone caught up on the same codexes, and then they do something like this, and it's like going against the grain of what they've kind of been doing. It, it is weird, but I do think you hit the nail on the head when you said, like, they they weren't selling, they boost them to sell. I think maybe Blood Angels, the scouts are not so popular for. Um, same well, with, just and they're, they're a bit general. weird. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. And the same with, I with Space Scouts Wolves, in like, my Blood Angels it, army. Yeah, I don't, you're weird and you don't help my point that I'm making. <laughs> <laughs> How many Blood Angels armies do you see, Seb? <laughs> Yeah, I've exactly. seen pictures. They 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 take the jumpy guys, the ass guys. Not anymore, because yeah, because they're, they're not trick they're choices anymore. Time. Yeah, and that's true. So like, now now you only have scouts and tactical marines. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But yeah, they they they've, they've made them more sexy to sell more, and weirdly bring them more in line with the the fluff. It but seems to me. Wouldn't. Wouldn't you sell more as well if you also gave Blood Angels the same? Because now Blood Angel players are like, well, I can get some cool scouts. And then you have Space Wolf players where if they change Blood Claws to have that, they're like, because, I mean, Space Wolf players don't take Blood Claws for the most part because of that. Because Grey Hunters are like yeah. a couple points more. They used to be the exact same points in the older Codex, which is dumb. But now they're just a couple points more and you're just so much better. But like, let's say they change that stat. How many Space Wolf players would go out and buy one, two boxes of of Blood Claws? I guarantee you, I would. I would love to the, take some yeah. Blood Claws at, with Rage and Weapon Skill 4. But the, the stats fit the fluff of that book battle. What? The so you're, a blood What? A Blood Claw is the same stat, like, same Weapon Skill as a Cultist? Seb just made the point that that shouldn't be. And you agreed with him. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the, the individual books and the rules are, are, de are designed around the fact that they can the, design around the fluff for that book. So then you shouldn't compare cultists uh, to scouts because they're different books. And the, and the and if the I fluff didn't... is... Yeah. You didn't, but Seb did, and you did agree with him. I just agreed with him to keep the conversation rolling. That if if if, <laughs> if the if the stats are designed around the fluff in the book, which I can completely understand, and that's a, that's a valid point, but that's not how it works. I mean, the Blood Angels and the Space Wolves have a dodgy hypnagogue machine, which doesn't train their scouts well enough. Well, no one plays. Or the Space Wolves are too old. Space Wolves get old and they forget how to shoot. Maybe. <laughs> oh, the space wolves get old and forget how to shoot. Yeah, but the boys close are the youngest guys. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, the, yeah. Again, they don't train them very well. I was getting my blood claws and my wolf scouts confused because space wolves are confusing. They just confuse Games Workshop. That's what's happened. Games Workshop's just confused. They do this stuff <laughs> knowing that people are going to get upset about it, but they don't care because. They sell models, not not rules. But they fuck yeah. with also, the rules all the damn time. Remember, Space Wolves don't follow the Codex. Normally it's the Codex of Sartes, but this time it's, they don't follow the Codex Space Marines. Yeah, so the the best uh some of the best fighting space marines in the universe are the same <laughs> as cultists. <laughs> Got it, Seb. Yep. You're a exactly. hypocrite. You, you... <laughs> <laughs> you I'm make one point. What? You make one point somewhere, and then the same point doesn't follow over to another another one. <laughs> oh, I just love just love, just enjoying your energy and fueling you in this this I mean, interesting. Uh, there's no right. You're having. There's no right or wrong answer when it comes to like the way they're going to do it because they're going to do whatever they want to do, and they're not going to listen to other people because they don't have to listen to people. They're just going to do what they yeah. want to do. I just think it's weird that they made that change. And apart from selling some scouts, I think it's unnecessary. Fair enough. And I think, I definitely think people will agree with me. 
You guys yeah, don't play Space like... Marines enough to understand the pain. Yeah, no, I'm not very yeah, invested think into this. <laughs> You've never used scouts in your life, except for no. one time Seb used them and he had the new damn rules for them. The only time Seb's used scouts is when he had the new rules for them. <laughs> I was happy with them. You haven't felt the yeah. pain of taking a five-man scout squad at ballistic skill three and uh, <laughs> having, like, you know, two shots hit, then needing four ups to hurt with your snipers and having nothing happen. I have had the pain of having a five-man squad crouch in front of a Carnifex, pretending that they're not there, and then get stabbed the next turn. So I have felt some scout pain. Well, that was your fault. It's nothing to do with the rules. <laughs> <laughs> this is fair. This is very fair. Yeah. So any um, last... I think that's probably enough. We can. I was gonna say that's probably yeah, enough. We can say on that. But, but it'd be intrigued to see what other people think with any comments or messages they have. Any any proper scout followers, or or whether they think toxic getting all worked up over not so much i do have one thing to add and it is kind of taking it away from the whole comparison to other codexes so strictly th staying with those codexes a lot of people have been okay. saying well now there's why would you take tactical marines because scouts have the same you know basically they can take the same weapons uh same stats they just have a worse save but they're a lot cheaper so just take tactical marines you can take more of them so it doesn't matter that they have a, a worse save What'd be your opinion on that? Can you still take all the heavy weapons? Yep, you can take a rocket launcher. You can't take like a las cannon or anything, but the most common thing that people will take in a tactical squad is a hit missile launcher. I, I do like my, my three up power arm safe. Plus you can take shotguns and say. things like that. And it's camo true. cloaks. It, it definitely, know, they, I would definitely give more of an option and and have them in, in in a force so definitely consider them i would never have considered them before really but i do like i do like my power armor and my normal marines what about you savage i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but they, they don't have spikes on none of them have got spikes yeah, on so I'm, doesn't care <laughs> i'm not i'm not in comfortable waters talking about this stuff but i i don't know i'd probably take them over tactical marines depending well, I mean, I mean, just assume that they're Chaos Space Marines with a 4-up save. Yeah, I'd probably take them. The, my issue, like, I have is, like, at the start of the game, yeah, they'd be fine. You got, you know, massed infantry, you got more guys on the board. They're going to die faster, though. How, uh, much, how much points difference is it, though? Like, do, do you know the exact points difference? I can bring it up here now. But, um, I know it was significant, at, at least... It, it has been. But uh, my my idea is, like, a 3-up save and a 4-up save, like, it is a big difference. Like, there's a lot more AP4 uh, out there. And at the end of the game, if you have a squad of guys left, I would much rather have that 3-up save to rely on than a 4-up. Because you might be playing a 2,000-point game, but, you know, when it comes down to turn 5, turn 6, like, you're now playing a 500-point game. And I would yeah. much rather have that three up save to keep my guys alive. So I got the Dark Angels Codex up here. I'm just scrolling through it. As uh, it seems to me, if you're building from the troop up, you'd go tactical marines. But if you're going from your elites and your heavies downwards, and you're trying to squeeze points in, you definitely more like to go with scouts. That's where it seems to me. Well, scouts have always just been a good unit that you like put camo clocks on them and sit them on an objective, and then just ignore them basically, and. So there's really no reason that they needed to change at all because I don't think people really cared too much about them. Like I don't think there was an outcry of people saying like, "Give us some more <laughs> weapon skill, ballistic skill on these units." Yeah. Which but, is very much like cultists. They don't necessarily fight. They just yeah, do stuff. They but, get on objectives and get in the way. I think it's like Games Workshop's thing is just like, "Oh, we've done this. You should buy them and try them out." Um, where the hell, where the hell are they in this codex? Red Nords. Let's see. Okay, here we go. So scouts okay. are 55 points for five. And you can include five additional at 11 points model. Tactical squads are 70 points. And you can, so that's three points difference. You can get 14 points for 
for one in power armor. I would pay three points for a for power plus armor one to say. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think where like it does get some people though is like if you're looking at ten guys, you know, it's thirty points. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But it might not seem a lot. But then I like, I'm, I'm used to my mark of Nurgle, and that's like four to six yeah. or like crazy some things. But yeah, but look, like, if you're rocking like two, three squads, you know, sixty, ninety points, it's not huge, and I would definitely rather a tactical marine than a scout. And the increase in the increase in the weapon skill, ballistic skill, is not going to sway me to, to take scouts. It's just like a little bonus, like oh, if I take scouts, I get this. Uh, yeah, which I think well, is probably if you're paying space wolves. <laughs> well, I think that's probably why they won't increase the space wolves one, and until maybe they come out with a new codex, just because the space wolf one is a thing where you'd go, I will take blood claws now, because. Yeah. And it does come down to what Savage said, is like, looking at it just with that codex, it fits with that codex and it balances with that codex. But fitting with everything else, it's kind of weird and, and skewed. But then everything's very weird and skewed when you start comparing like Tyranids and Cultists and Scouts and it, it, things get bizarre. But yeah, they, they fit the hierarchy of the, the book with they're contained within. Okay, so ready to go to the next topic? Yep. Uh, yes, indeed. So yeah, so another thing that has kind of come up in, uh, mostly when Savage and I have a game, it hasn't really come up yet in uh, a game with Seb, but it's been things like melt the bombs plasma pistols, just like the, the garbage upgrades that you'll kind of give to units that, uh, you know, you have five points left over, give a sergeant a melt the bomb um, The plasma pistol is a little bit different because it is actually a lot, you know, it's about 15 points. Uh, give or take the codex, but just kind of like those extra upgrades for sergeants and and you know champions, aspiring champions, you know whatever your sergeant is called, uh, is is something that kind of has come up a couple times where uh, you know you've you've just gotten into a situation where you can blow up a tank, and the melter ball might blow up a tank, and you're like I blow up a tank with five point upgrade, or it's like if I take this five point upgrade, then I don't have to, like because if you have like a sergeant, right, you have 25 points for a power fist. And you're like, well, if I have the power fist, I can kill people and I can cut tanks because I have the power fist, doubles my strength. If you take a melt bomb then you can drop down to a power weapon. And you can be like, okay, I got a power weapon and a melt bomb so I can still hurt infantry and I can still hurt tanks and monstrous creatures with my melt bomb I save myself five points. Five points, not a lot. I was like, I was thinking about it just the other day. I'm like, would that should be like, you know, is there a need for like melter bombs, like a plasma pistol, 15 points, but let's say you're about to charge and you fire your plasma pistol and you kill one Marine. Marines are like 14, 15 points, depending on the codex, if not more, if they're like a veteran or something. Like, is that worth the trade off? Like, you know, a 15 point upgrade to kill a 15 point model or you know, maybe get two kills in there three kills in there depending on how long you can get them to live that, that's kind of what i was like thinking is you know maybe we should be looking at these little upgrades a little bit uh a little bit more and they're cool as well i mean that they're things that you don't get to model onto your units because you're like i'll never give my guys plasma pistols because they've always been too expensive but a plasma pistol looks a lot cooler on a model and they're a lot more fun to paint than a bolt pistol oh def definitely what would you know about painting, Seb? <laughs> I painted plasma pistol. I painted one plasma pistol. <laughs> yeah, I know, because like, we all probably don't take these upgrades unless we have points left over. But would it be something that you'd actually build a list around giving them these type of upgrades? Probably not. I, I see that. I see the use for them as like the same desperation as when you put the points into it buying that thing. Mm -hmm. Like you're like, oh, there's a tank right near me. And I've only got like this sergeant left. Oh, he's got a melt bomb. I guess I'll throw him at it. Well, that that comes up quite a lot. Yeah. Like, it's come up a lot in our games, like with with us running Wall of Fiends and stuff like that. And yeah. It's like it comes up a fair bit. Like where you have like just a dude or a squad and you know there's a dreadnought or something running towards them like you already for space marines you know obviously not everyone has like crack grenades 
frat grenades are already amazing in close combat against walkers and stuff. Yeah. You know, 6 plus d6. Melter bomb is 8 plus 2d6, so it's going to destroy, like, at least do a, do a, you know, at least do a hull point damage. So it's like something that... I definitely do... I was gonna say, I just definitely do like having having my uh, my sergeants and champions, and basically anyone can take a murder bomb if I've got the spare points. I like them to have it. You you just never know. And I had the same same situation. Dreadnought. I had a group of havocs. I didn't have the points because we were paying only five hundred points, and it was real squeeze stuff in, and the crack just wasn't doing it. And I really wish I had that melter, which would have probably seen it off. If you get lucky with melter, it is deadly. <laughs> What's what I'm saying? Like, is it enough that you would actually consider? You know, not waiting to the end where it's like, I need to see if I have the points left over. Um, and because, like, it, I don't know, I just I feel like there's situations that come into a game where it's like, if I can kill this dreadnought in close combat with my infantry, very unlikely, but could win me the game or be a huge loss to my opponent. And to, to lose a dreadnought to something that he should be able to kill. If you put that melt bomb on there, you know, melt bomb power weapon is cheaper than a power fist. Would you like if you're going to be running power fist anyway? Would you go to a, a power weapon melter bomb instead of a power fist? I I sometimes whack like upgrades like that on there. Show you like gift of mutation. It's like a ten point upgrade, gift of mutation. which I chuck on has there. Go, but, anything that can has to have it. <laughs> yeah, but then at the same time, if I'm like trying to fit other stuff in that's better, or I think that would work better is like usually the first upgrade to go as well i would even get rid of gift of mutation and put more melter bombs onto things yeah well usually yeah it's the, usually the gift of mutation or just melter bombs but then at the same time like yeah it's if i'm running out of points i'll drop them first because the majority of the time my shit just sits in rhinos anyway by the time it's out it's kind of too late to not too late, but yeah. mostly other shit on the field yeah. is dead. Yeah, I think maybe with the runner approach is not quite quite the same. Yeah, but but I'm definitely with you on the, the gift gift mutation, man. Gift mutation for me is the most chaotic thing you can take for chaos, and it just it feels like it should be an all like a must take for things. It just makes me happy. It makes you sad when you roll under fifteen. God I, damn it! But I, I would definitely <laughs> run the the power power sword, melt bomb. If I was running like raptors or assault marines, because you're the, you can then take down troops and you're still hitting an initiative, whatever, but then you can still punch a tank or something as well. I would almost argue that you would be doing a disservice to your marines by leaving them in their rhinos their whole game. That's not cheap. A ten man squad of marines is not cheap, and to have it sit in there. In a rhino all game, well, like, you well, might I drive just go around to a five man but... squad and spend the points somewhere else. Sitting yeah. in a rhino, decent strategy, but uh, I wouldn't even upgrade them otherwise. But uh, and if because if you think about it, this uh, way, right? Five man terminate squad. <laughs> like ever since like fifth edition, it was there, you know there was a, a pretty big emphasis on on objectives. It was one and three, uh, no two and three uh, missions were going to be uh, objective based. 6th edition, you had even more objective-based missions. It was like 5 and 6 or something like that was going to be objective-based. Now you have even more, because now you're going to have... What, you have a possible of 12 missions, and like all but one is objectives or something like that? Something ridiculous, right? It's just post the if, And if you're yeah. running a objective-secured, like, combined arms detachment, where you have objective secured, if you're buying dedicated transports... Your dedicated transport has objective secured, and your troops have objective secured. So why not use the rhino to get the troops to an objective, secure that objective, and then speed your rhino off to another objective and get two objectives instead of you know sitting around. And in that case, if I'm if I'm on an objective and I don't if I don't have my rhino because he's off scoring another objective, then you know I can. Uh, I, I, I want, like, a melter bomb in case I get charged by a Dreadnought or, like, even a monstrous creature or something like that. So that's... Definitely. And like you said, the plasma pistols, and it's 15 points, but, yeah, they're so taking down... Should, should hopefully take it at least 15 points, even if it blows... <laughs> kills the person holding it. 
But is it Strength 7 AP3? Yeah. The... Getting through a lot of stuff. Yeah. The AP3 or AP2? It's AP2. 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 So, yeah. You, you can, can kill through Terminator. Terminator. Yeah. The, the yeah. plasma pistol is is one that is harder to justify because it is fifteen points, it's not five. If it was five points for a plasma pistol, all of my sergeants would have plasma pistols. So it's harder to justify fifteen points. But I mean, I was just thinking about like you know, it's, this the, it's always you, majority of the games you're probably gonna have a situation to fire that plasma pistol. Uh, Anything about still giving you plasma extra pistols? Attackers, yeah. Yeah, it's giving you extra attack if you have a non-specialist weapon, close combat weapon. The only thing about putting plasma pistols on your, like, champions and stuff is that they have a high chance of dying from overheat. I wouldn't say high chance. And they have a chance of them... dying. They don't have yeah. a high chance. Yeah. You well, put you, it on a you, Chaos you... Lord, he's hitting on anything but a 1. You roll a 1, you then have, like, a 3-up save, and he has, like, 3 wounds. Yeah, but Plus... we're just talking about, like, um, Sergeant. Sergeants and stuff. Yeah, I with, can see with, that. With give mutation and plasma pistol and motor bombs. <laughs> That's 35 points on top of his base points. That is sad times when he goes boom. I wouldn't say it's a high chance, but there's a, there's a chance there, obviously. You have to roll a 1 or 2 and then roll another 1 or a 2. So yeah, but you're still, you're still adding more chances than what he comes with. I think the risk is the risk is worth the reward, though, for for the damage they can do. I think it's the to, points to, to that, troops and. Yeah. In my opinion, yeah, it's, it's the, more, points it's the points that that's not. It's not the fact that he's going to die from his plasma pistol. In my opinion, it's more the points. The points that are the risk. Is, is what's yeah is what's killing it for me. If yeah. It's cheaper then, yeah, I would take plasma pistols. And it, if you think about so it, I... in a... <laughs> go ahead. I was going to say I've got um Drazi called. Dry snakes or whatever his name is from the Dive Engine set, so he's got a plasma pistol. So I'm generally fielding him with the plasma pistol because that's what he's got. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about this as well. A plasma pistol. It's also like a um, deterrent as well. You know what I mean? Like, if you know I have a plasma pistol, like it's a deterrent of getting close to twelve. Or if you're got one guy, you know, and you're like, well, I'm just gonna charge him. It's like, well, I got that plasma pistol. If I roll that six, you're probably gonna die. It's like it's kind of like a deterrent as well, and I think it's yeah. I I would probably put one on like if it, it was a sergeant or something. I would probably throw a plasma pistol on if I was running like a, a squad with two plasma guns in it as well. Just give that extra plasma. Yeah. There's a like... whole lot deadly when you've got a yeah three of them. Yeah, I yeah I think it's more worth the fifteen points if you've got a squad with two plasma guns in it as well. <laughs> Yeah, and it's something that I brought up back in sixth edition with Space Wolves was taking two plasma pistols. Oh and yeah, and like the gunslinger. But yeah, you get gunslinger. So you're getting to fire them both. Yeah, yeah. That's so that's that's still a thing. Cause I've not seen so much of that. I'm pretty uh, sure it's still a thing. Seventh. But um. But it's you get both the shots, and you're getting an extra close combat attack. Because they, they both count. So, I'm pretty that sure. Looks, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, and it looks cool. Like, <laughs> it just looks cool. So my dual thing was plasma pistols. Yeah, five wolf guard dual plasma pistols in a drop pod. Drop pod them down. You're getting like ten, and then you put a wolf priest in there, and you're rerolling ones because you have preferred enemy. So your gets hot is basically oh. nullified. You like you go That's from disgusting. Yeah, because like if you have a dozer blade and you're like, well, I got to roll double ones to. You know, you don't even think that you're going to get immobilized with a dozer blade. It's basically the same thing. If you've got a plasma gun and a wolf priest giving you preferred enemy, you got to roll double ones to get get hard. But... Which which you kind of want with the yeah five man squad firing twice. You're going to get <laughs> it really does up your chances. But yeah, he he nullifies that beautifully. But yeah, but that, that's kind of getting away from the point because it's building a squad specifically <laughs> around it rather than just giving these random upgrades. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, I I mean. We don't know too much about other armies to the extent of what you would be giving, you know, other armies to just kind of throw on. Wait, you stuff. could do like Tyr Tyranids is like the uh, adrenal glands. Yeah, like adrenal glands and things like that that you can just throw on regeneration, random stuff like that. I mean, 
the same rule applies to any army is like should you should these be taken a bit more seriously because you know they actually could be game changers the melter bombs are the biggest ones For me, that i've seen bombs. Definitely. I've yeah. seen there's plenty of times where I've been stuck in combat with a dreadnought or something. Technically, I can hurt it, but it's so freaking impossible to hurt it that what's the point? Or you know, you're fearless, so you can't fall back and you can't hurt it. So you know, give them something to, to do it for, with. But I definitely the way I build my list is I will upgrade my sergeants, power weapon, plasma pistol, make my whole list. And then if there's something that I desperately need to include, and I'm like five points short, then I might consider getting a melt, dropping a melter bomb. But it's something that I'm definitely take more now, just because you can use them against monstrous creatures and stuff too. So the, the only thing with me was yeah, with gift, gift mutations and marks, especially mark and Nurgle, they first start to get a lot, and you're you're actually cutting whole units out. But for the good that they can do, I think melters are a must for me. You wouldn't consider dropping gift of mutation? I find that physically very difficult. Uh, the only the only way I would ever drop it is if it was fully keeping out another unit. Yeah. See, I'm not a fan I just of love gift of mutation. mutation. I like it. Yeah. And I like what it can do, but I feel like a lot of the times it just never comes into play. Like Yay, my sergeant with his bolt pistol has extra ballistic skill. <laughs> my sergeant has extra weapon skill. It's like, for a sergeant, I don't think instant, it's worth it. For HQ, death, feel no pain. Yeah, it's, it's not worth it. But for a sergeant, though, for one like, yeah. little sergeant, I don't think it's worth it. I, yeah. For an Again, HQ, it, it, it's yeah. getting into the fluff as well, because I, I guess my fermenters, the whole gift of mutations because of their drinking and crazy stuff, so, it, yeah. I'm just in the mindset of it. I like it. It's not necessarily effective or deadly. It's just fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's more of a fun thing. If it was five it's like a fun outside. version of the Warp Storm table for demons. Because the Warp Storm table just bites you in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it is, it is pure chaos. It also helps them out a little bit too. Because chaos yeah. demons don't have a shooting phase. Well, they Because they really don't have a lot of shooting. They don't have any shooting, do they? Apart from maybe like a skull cannon or something. Uh, skull cannon, burning chariot, pink horrors. Basically, you're looking at zine. Yeah, shooty stuff. And then yeah, the so psychic shooty stuff, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah it's psychic more like stuff, psychic. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Age of Sigma where they do just shoot. But it's <laughs> like um, the warp storm table does kind of help out with that, and as well because you're getting a little bit of damage on, you know, sprinkled out. That's the way I look at yeah. it, at least. It's true. Kind of you're, up if you're paying an undivided army, though, it can hurt. <laughs> it can. But, uh... Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's kind of all we have to do with this episode. I don't think we really do have anything to else to say. Mention the painting oath. Well, that's... Oh, yeah, it's not a bad. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we yeah, we're we'll starting a monthly uh, painting oath. Uh, we we'll start starting next week, so it'll be four weeks from uh, next Sunday, and with well, this Sunday coming, and it'll be a character or a vehicle or a monster or a unit. Uh, it can be Warhammer, it can be Age of Sigma, it can also be any other tabletop system as well. Um, and if you're in one of the allies part of the blog, we'll get people to post their uh, work in progress and their final image. And also, if you're going to be coming along and doing it with us, we would happily take your submissions and get them up on the Painting Oaths tab on the blog. So yeah, just something to get people painting a bit more. And I know lots of people do a lot more, and if you want to do more oaths and want to share more, then you're more than welcome to do that as well. It's kind of like, it's a, start... like a pledge, right? Like, you could just be like, I will yeah. I'll do like, my oath is like two units or three units or whatever right uh, yeah but basically it's got to be at least one unit or character or monster yeah. or vehicle so for instance mine cause we're doing it sort of in tandem uh with my, my local shop so I'm, I'm not gonna be doing extra ones because i'm finding it difficult to keep up with one as it is but um Shit, so i was doing savage. my blood warriors for the last month <laughs> so yeah so unit blood warriors was mine um yeah it could be anything else so are you doing blood warriors this month for this one they will no 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 because they they will be they will have been done before I will actually. Start. He's basically saying he's cheating. He's setting up two places where he does oaths, but he's only doing <laughs> one, and counting them for both. 
Yes. That... I was inspired <laughs> by one. Yeah, you're yeah. You're, you're doubling yeah. up. Yeah. Right, well, I, I am doubling. I'm pledging two two squads of pink horrors. Okay. Fair play. TB. Mr. Toxic. I'm not pledging anything right now. I don't know what I want to paint. <laughs> Fair enough. No, you pledge something now. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> um, I think we we also we were going to talk about um, the fear no, no, I will, of forty k being simplified, but um, maybe maybe should we talk about that next time. Yeah, we can. Or do you want to get into too that? long today? I will pledge something right now. now. Yeah, I will up that, and I will go. You gonna get forty blood four, letters? No, four squads because they're eight eight man squads. So eight man squads. That'll be thirty six. <laughs> Bloody show offs. <laughs> so, nope. yeah, just remind me, everyone else watching, watching it could starting be from now. <laughs> <laughs> but it only has to be one unit or one character, one monster, or one vehicle for all you guys. Don't have to be show offs like these two. We haven't done it yet. <laughs> I'm yeah. I got, I got one squad undercoded and put together to start. See, that's naughty. That's cheating. That's outside the parameters. Well, I didn't know what to talk about cheating. Uh, nah, it'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah. About cheating. Look, a contempt of dreadnought is exactly the same as a Lord of Change. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I just kick him from the call. I would yeah. do it, but it will screw up my screen regions. So, uh. <laughs> anyway, uh, this has been episode one of Battle Bros for uh, alliesindex.com. Check out alliesindex.com for more geeky gaming goodness. With me today was Seb. Taddy bye. And Savage. Taddy bye. <laughs> and I'm Toxic. And like always, have a good one.